welcome to my channel of Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. This is Pastor Florence. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for you for the time you take to listen, to watch, and practice what you learn from all the teachings that I put out there. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for the time you take to pray for me. Maybe you might say, Pastor Florence, I never pray for you. That's okay. I'm just reminding you. We have the book of Deuteronomy, which is about, you know, reminding, repetition. I'll keep on reminding you. Please, please, I need your prayers like never before so that I can continue doing this work that God has given me. And I do it with a lot of passion and with a lot of joy. So today is one of those days I bring you putting on the right gear for the weekend. Uh, it is my prayer that you will be blessed you, if only you are willing to listen and put to practice. My weekly schedule is in a snapshot ARL. Monday through Wednesday, I bring you inspiration word. Thursday, celebrating in the kitchen. Fridays, like today, putting on the right gear for the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, I take a break. So that because we are all busy, don't be right. Everybody is busy, especially me. I am really busy, but I still have time to do what God has called me to do. Who knows the secret? The secret is because I know out of day and night, 24 hours, I have 2 hours and 40 minutes for God. That is the tithe of my 24 hours. With the 2 hours and 40 minutes, you can do a lot, my brother, my sister. So stay with me. Uh, today, being that time of putting on the right gear, I'm going to be sharing from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 27. I'll read from New King James Fashion. I would also encourage you to read from other fashions in Jesus' name. And um, before... I do that, I'm going to pray, and I, what I'm going to be talking about is the teamwork and the way we are, God has called us so that we can live in unity. That's why I have put on this t-shirt, it's not just putting it, It is. this is the uh, dream team, D dream team makes a difference, let me raise it up a little, a little bit, dream team make a difference. This is one of the shirts we have in my church. We got in our church because I'm in the guest services of the dream team. We help people to feel welcome in my in, in the church. I am not a pastor there. I'm a member there and I serve there passionately with a lot of commitment in the dream team or guest services and in the prayer ministry. Uh, if you happen to come to Grace Fellowship Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, I'm always on door number three unless I'm not there because I go out for missions. So may the Lord God bless you. Uh, we are going to start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you. I want to bless you for the privilege of, t of sharing your word. I count it a blessing. Lord God Almighty, I know I'm not the best, but I'm available. I'm not the most qualified, I'm available. Oh God, I pray that my fear and my listener, either now or in the future, because it's recorded material, that somebody will be motiv motivated and inspired, dear Father, to be available and be willing to be used of you. Take over, dear Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be praising to thee, dear Father. I lift you high up, Jehovah God, because you've said, if you are lifted up, you shall draw men unto yourself. Do only what you can do in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Yes. Putting on the right gear for the weekend. I want to concentrate on what the teamwork or how many uh, body parts there are in the body of Christ. Listen to this. The subtitle of uh, these scriptures is one body but many parts. First of all, there is one body but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We are all baptized by one Holy Spirit, and so we are formed into one body. It didn't matter whether we were Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free people. We were all given the same spirit to drink. So the body is not made up of just one part. It has many parts. Suppose the food says, I am not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. Verse 16, and suppose the ear says, I am not an eye, uh, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop the it, it, it cannot stop being part of the body. I like this. <laughs> Verse 17. If the whole body were one eye, how could it <laughs> how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has pressed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be. If all the parts were the same, how could there be a body? Verse 20. As it is, there are many parts, but there is only one body. The eye 
can't say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you, 22. In fact, it is just the opposite. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are the ones we can't do without. Hey. The parts that we think are less important, we treat with special honor. Special honor. The private parts aren't shown, but they, they are treated with special care. 24. The parts that can, can be shown don't need special care, but God has put together all parts of one of the body and he has given more honor to the parts that didn't have any. 25. In that way, the parts of the body will not take sides. All of them will take care of one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part shares in its joy. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is of is part of it. May the Lord God bless his word. Why would I be sharing this on putting on the right gear for the weekend? Because you and I, my brother, my sister, are like that machine, that car, that jet, that bicycle, that motorcycle that take you from point A to point B. And it is not just made by the steering wheel. No. It is made with little parts. Even the nuts. If there is an unscrew, if, if one part of the screws is unscrewed, that motorcycle will not go. The, you know, the car, no matter how good it is, I drive a, a good car and I thank God for that. It is by his grace. And I want to tell you, no matter how good car it can be, if the, if it doesn't have the pressure, if the tires doesn't have the pressure, it's not going to move. Even a limousine cannot move if it has the, the pressure. The, the, the tires are flat. My brother and my sister, you and I have been called by God to be in motion, but we cannot be in motion unless we work together as a team. That's why I am here to inspire you. I am part of that body of Christ, and you are there to pray for me because you are part of that body of Christ. I need you and you need me. And time and again I say, you and I are like pedals of a bicycle. One pedal is up and another one is down for the motorbike, for the, the bicycle to uh, to be functional. There is no way that a, a bicycle can be functional when both pedals are up. No, one has to be up and another one down. We have heard it from this word and I would like you to read it again. Try to do a personal Bible study from verse 12 to 27 with the different fashions because of time and I read many verses, I did not read different parts. You can read it, the NLT, the New King James Fashion, whatever, the Berean Bible, whatever, so that you can grasp and chew the card of what God is talking about, you know, about the body of Christ. You and I, if we are the parts of the body of Christ, no, I cannot move without you. You cannot move without me. Many people say, I cannot do it like you, Pastor Florence. For well, sure you can't. Because maybe I'm like that screw. If I'm unscrewed, you're not going to function. You're not going to be encouraged by don't bring this word. So I want to challenge you. You are there. And today is that day I remind you of putting on the right gear for the weekend. For you to put on the right gear for the weekend, you must have the, you must have, you must respect the unity of the body of Christ. If you are born to be a preacher, you be preaching on the way. Never think you be forsaken, for you be preaching on the right way. Are you traveling on the right way? Are you traveling on the right way? Are you traveling on the right way? You be traveling on the right way. If you are born to be a singer, you be singing on the way. Never think you be forsaken. You be singing on the right. If you are born to be an intercessor, you've been tasseding all the way. Never think you'll be forsaken. You are part, you must pray it right. The engine of that BMW you drive. Of that Volvo you drive, of that Subaru you drive, of that Sonata you drive, of that Toyota you drive, of that Nissan you drive cannot act, cannot move. If you don't have gas, if you don't have petrol, that's why we need the Holy Spirit to fill us with power every day. Hey, the, the acts of the apostles were told to wait 
in Jerusalem until they were given power from above. You need that, that oil, that oil of the Holy Spirit so that you can be able to function. Then you check on the tires, you check on the side mirrors. Do you... <laughs> One day, I, 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 I started to drive and I'm driving and I couldn't see, I, I tried to see, I couldn't see and I wondered, I had to put the, you know, the, the, the hazard and then I came out, I had to... <laughs> I had to position my side mirror. My brother, my sister, you could be that side mirror. That's why you need one to, to put on the integrity. As you start off this weekend, uh, work with integrity, knowing you are the you are part of you. It doesn't matter how, how senior, how old you can be, you are part of the body of Christ. You cannot just deceive yourself and say you are working as a single part, as a single unit. No, my brother, my sister. Let, let, let you know that because you are part of the body of Christ, you need to work with integrity. Behave with integrity. Dress with integrity. Yeah. Treat other people with integrity and respect. But let me tell you, when you respect all people, irrespective of their class, what you know what we have achieved this academic achievement. Let me tell you. You are English, English and talking like you're talking with the noses does not change who God is. He still says that you respect your parents because that is a promise. That is a first commandment with a promise. You need to treat them with integrity. My brother and my sister, what am I saying? Let us respect each other, knowing that we are part and parcel of the body of Christ. If I go and refer to another story of how we need to treat people with respect oh my goodness i don't know where i would st start or where i would end naman who was a commander and had leper leprosy it was because of a servant girl who was taken captive who brought the news you see me here as Pastor Florence, I could be bringing you message of deliverance. I could be bringing you message that will take you very far. But you have gotten used to Pastor Florence. He always disturbs us with these messages. There is a time that I will be in three by six. I will not disturb you anymore. So what am I saying? Let us put on the right gear of integrity. Let us put on the right gear of respecting each other. Let us put on the right gear of knowing that you need each other. You need the community. You need your family. You need your parents. You need your teachers. You need your supervisors. Treat your supervisors with respect. When you hear people saying this and that, it's not about what they do. It's about you. you, you how you behave to them because it is not you don't do your supervisors a favor when you respect them. Whenever I write email to my to my supervisors, I always like to advise. You know, your work is always we appreciate. I appreciate personally. I appreciate what you do because well, <laughs> respect is a two way. Respect other people, and you'll be respected. Unless when God wants you to pass through fire, you'll be disrespected. But don't count those people against you. You are we are part of one body. The supervisor cannot have a job without the employees. The employees cannot do without an employer. Why are you talking ill of your employer? You cannot do without the parents. If it doesn't matter where you go. I don't know why I always mention this, but uh, when you come to your deathbed, or maybe you die, and you are far from your parents or your relative or whatever, when your body cannot be identified or identified, it cannot be disclosed to the public until it is released to the next of kin. That's how important your family is. That's how important the family of God is. That's why we need to respect each other. I tell you, when there is problems, the pastors are called. Are you able to join us for prayer meetings? Other times they are not remembered. We don't take that offense. We don't take personally. I don't take it uh, personally. You call me and you don't even care what I do or pray for me. I will still come because I'm not doing you a favor. I'm doing myself a favor because I'm part of the body of Christ and God has commissioned me to do the work of the ministry. The bottom line is put on the right gear of respect. Put on the right gear of respecting the authority. Put on the right gear of valuing the community. Put on the right gear of knowing that together we can stand. We can make it. Umoja ni guvu. In unity we stand. May the Lord God bless you. I would like you to read again. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 12 to 
now, first 12 to 27. And I know you are not going to come out without gaining something in Jesus' name. I would like to highlight a few verses here again. This is First Corinthians uh, 12, verse 12 to 27. At that first 12, there is, on, there is one body, but it has many parts. You are part of that body. But all its many parts make up one body. We make up the body of Christ. Hmm? Now, I, I'm going to jump also to verse 16. And suppose the ear says, I am I'm not the eye. I don't belong to the body. Don't say I'm not a pastor. There has to be a pastor. There has to be somebody who is going to reason. For the members of the church, the pastor feeds you so that you can go feed others. Like now I said, I'm a member of Grace Fellowship. We are fed by our lead pastor there, Pastor Joe Boyd. I love you, Pastor Joe Boyd. I respect what you do. When he is preaching there, he has no idea what he's doing. He's just, he's ministering to the people of God as God has given him the assignment. Now there is Pastor Florence, as I'm seated there, I am fed and I come to feed you. He does not know that he's reaching Saudi Arabia and, you know, where my sister Catherine is. He does not know that he's reaching to Germany where my sister Marse is. He does not know that he's reaching to Texas where my sister Banzi Joki is. He does not know that, oh, my brother, my sister, he's reaching Seattle where my one of the mentee there is. What am I saying? Do the work that God has called you to do without comparing yourself with others. That will be putting on the right gear for the wicked. May the Lord God bless you. Father, I thank you. I've given your word. Should there be that one uh, word I added which you do not want your people to hear. Lord God, I pray that you may filter it, that your daughter and your son out there will only get which you want them to hear for this time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, because the scripture has said that the body has many parts, you are one of that part. You must recognize that you are part of that body as an individual. If you are the ear, you must recognize you are that ear for the whole body of Christ. But that's why you, your individual identity is important. Have you accepted the Lord? Because that is a beginning. That is a starting point. If you have not, I want you, I pray to you, make a commitment to the Lord by following this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the reminder of your word. Forgive me where I've always thought I can do it alone. Forgive me, dear Father. I surrender my life to you. And now I come to you in humility that you forgive me. Write my name in the book of life and give me a desire to grow spiritually. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you've been transformed. The old is gone and the new has come. And now you'll know you are going to work as a team as you put on the gear of integrity and know that the dream, the, the, the dream team, the Okay, <laughs> the dream team make a difference. When you team up with the word of God, the way it is, you are going to make a difference in your life. You are going to make a difference in your Christian life. You are going to make a difference in your family. You are going to make a difference in wherever you go in Jesus name. I love you. God loves you the most. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. If you have subscribed, share with other people. And above all, pray for me. How do you pray for Pastor Florence? EGR, extra grace required. So that I'll be able to deliver these messages faithfully that God gives to me. It's just by his grace that I do this. May the Lord God bless. Bless you. And remember Monday through Wednesday inspirational word. So that you don't have a reason that, uh, you know, I went to church on Sunday. You cannot live on alone one day. That's why I come in. God has given me this assignment for your sake. Then there's this. In the kitchen, we need to take care of the body. We need to eat well. You need to dress well. You need to talk well. And now, like today, Friday, putting on the right gear for the weekend. May the Lord God bless you. I love you. God loves you the most. Remember, you matter a lot. The body of Christ is not complete without you. I love you. God loves you the most. That's why I keep on reminding you to celebrate every moment. Not just celebrating, but celebrating it with joy. Why? Every moment counts. Every moment matters. Thank you.